You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 121. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Here we are in week six of this eight-part series all about how to let go and surrender. This week we are discussing releasing the grip and opening to possibilities. Before we get into it, I do want to share a few things. The first thing I want to share is for you to give yourself credit for making it through 75% of this work after today's episode. By the way, if you are just starting here on the tail end of this series, you can go back and start at the beginning at bexby.org slash let go. That's B-E-X-B dot O-R-G slash L-E-T-G-O. And if you want to follow along and notice your own thoughts and collect your own ideas as you learn about this, make sure to get the Let Go and Surrender journal, which is arranged in eight sections and matches each of these eight weeks. Another thing I want to share is that this is working for me so well, and I hope it's working for you too. Because I have been thinking about and writing and reading and saying these ideas and examples for the past month and a half, this work has seeped into my subconscious. I am noticing myself feeling more calm and relaxed about certain things. I am catching myself accepting and letting go. And I am aware of how much I am receiving and how abundant my life is in so many ways. It's working. One of the ways that I've been feeling abundant and receiving is all the great responses I have gotten from all of you about this series. I am so delighted that you are loving it and that you are telling me that you love it. Thank you so much for all the comments and messages about these episodes. Sandra let me know she was late to a meeting because she needed to write down the journal prompts. And Zane messaged me a mic drop quote about something that he loved. I got emails and comments and messages from Christy, Rose, Bob, and Nikki. And I know there are other examples of you appreciating the series that I am not even mentioning right now, like all of those of you who have purchased the journal and are following along. So thank you so much. It is giving me even more excitement and motivation to keep going and to create even more to benefit all of us. This week, we have three areas to talk about in the context of releasing the grip and opening to possibility. We will discuss the difference between our inner wisdom and the mind We will consider what it means to be 100% authentic, and we will break down the three stages of surrender. Remember, the grip I'm talking about is this misunderstood idea that we can or do control anything outside of ourselves. The grip is our attachment to how the future should be or how other people should behave or what should be happening in reality. Instead, we can release the grip and open to all possibilities. There are so many options. First, let's notice the difference between the inner wisdom and the mind. We can explore and identify these very different parts of our identities. Let's talk about what I mean when I say inner wisdom. This is maybe what you might consider your soul, your higher self, your essential self. It is a deep and trusted knowing. 
It's not always the loudest voice that you might hear, though. In fact, we do a really good job of paying attention to the louder, quicker voice, which is usually not your inner wisdom. I think of my inner wisdom as a quiet, slow, calm, measured, and not attention-seeking voice. This wisdom knows that all of our needs always have been and always will be met. This wisdom knows abundance and love. In contrast, when we think of the mind, maybe you would consider it your ego, it is very survival-based because it is coming from your limbic system or your amygdala. The mind can represent your social self, who is concerned with being accepted and making sure that you are part of the pack. Your inner wisdom is more about a deep, trusting knowing, and your mind is more about thinking and reacting. One of my favorite expressions that you've probably heard me say is, the answers we seek are inside of us. I honestly believe that the answers we really, really seek are deep inside of us, in our inner wisdom, even though our minds might be quick to give us answers in any given situation. Brene Brown has a post that says, I know I am not listening to myself when I notice I am asking other people what I should do. This quote makes me think of someone not tapping into that quiet, calm, knowing wisdom and instead listening to the more alert, fast-talking mind saying, ask her, ask him, someone's got to know the right answer. Think about what you think about throughout the day. Notice the voice, the narration, the suggestions. Maybe you are noticing the mind chatter. Maybe sometimes you do get a sense of something much deeper, much wiser. That mind chatter is the mind, and that deeper, wiser information is most likely coming from your inner wisdom. Part of letting go is quieting that urgent mind chatter, and noticing the messages you get from your intuition. Sometimes your mind, in an attempt to protect you, will try to block or argue away your intuition. If you practice noticing and listening to your inner wisdom, you can use it as a guide to trust yourself and feel more at peace. The more you trust yourself, the more authentic you can be. Authenticity is when we think and act in alignment with our true inner wisdom, not our ego. We can intentionally share what we are thinking and feeling without needing to please others. I am sure we have all heard someone excuse something that they just said by saying, well, I'm just being honest. My suspicion is that they needed to make that excuse because while their mind believed that what they said was quote unquote the truth, what they said was probably not authentically aligned from their inner wisdom. It was maybe something spoken as a reaction or something said out of fear or maybe in defense. The opposite of blurting something out, as suggested by the mind, is when we hold ourselves back from saying anything or saying something that really is authentic to us. Here's an example of me being 100% authentic in real time, despite what my ego might be afraid of. Both my ego and my inner wisdom are delighted with the positive feedback that I've been getting that I mentioned a moment ago, but they are delighted for different reasons. My ego likes the positive feedback because compliments and appreciation literally feed the ego. My inner wisdom knows I love this topic. I believe the best way to learn something is to teach it. I know it is helpful to you. And talking about these things is completely aligning and fulfilling for me in a really deep way. So when I thought about sharing with you that I have gotten this positive reaction, my ego, or could we say my social self, worried. No, that's bragging. People might not like it if I seem to be publicly congratulating myself. The inner wisdom, or we could say my essential self, knew that it was fine to share. 
I know you delight in hearing what delights other people. I also know that I cannot control your emotions by sharing or by withholding my good news. Being 100% authentic means being able to tell the difference between where a suggestion to share or not to mention something is coming from. Being 100% authentic also means saying no thank you without worrying that you might offend or disappoint. It means saying, I really like this, without being afraid of looking uncool or being judged or made fun of. The more authentic we are to ourselves and others, the less we think we need to control anything outside of ourselves, and the more we can let go and let life happen. Now let's talk about the three stages of surrender. The first stage is resistance. It's like an entitlement or an ultimatum. It's when you think, I better get this or this better happen. You are resisting the possibility that it might not happen or you might not get it. You feel very attached. Remember that physical metaphor that I shared a few weeks ago when you are gripping a tiny thing in your fingertips? You are literally resisting gravity by grasping and squeezing this thing in your fingers. Zoom out from that physical metaphor and scan your own last 24 hours or so. Is there anything that you have been gripping or grasping or trying to control or hold on to? Is there anything that you are resisting? The second stage of surrender is acceptance, but with an asterisk. It's telling yourself, this is how it is, and also, I can make this, whatever this is, happen. So maybe you try to manifest or manipulate. Maybe there's still this level of attachment, but it is mixed with some acceptance that you know you don't control everything. But you might think, well, I can do something. I might have a little control. There might be a little bit of practicality in there. There's thinking and scheming and wondering with acceptance that you don't currently have what you want and you're not forcing it, but you are trying to finesse it. So it is not complete resistance. There is the acceptance factor here, but acceptance with some attachment still. And the third stage of surrender is what we have been working towards this whole time. It is letting go. It is offering up whatever it is that you want. It is recognizing it's not mine. It's trusting. It's saying, I don't know what's supposed to happen and I trust what will come. My very favorite way to look at the three stages of surrender with authenticity and knowing the difference between the inner wisdom and the mind is to think of the six W questions. We all learn these questions in school. When we try to think about different situations or write papers or explain things, a shortcut is to use the six W's. They are who, what, where, when, why, and how. When we think about using these six W's in letting go and surrender, you can think of the questions in two columns, not your business and your business. (laughs) So what is your business out of those six questions? The word what is the reality of the situation. It's you noticing what is happening. I do have this or I don't have that. The what is acknowledging what someone did say. What is whatever the reality is. The second W is why. This is your intention. This is your purpose. Your true why is really coming from your 100% authenticity. You are not trying to please anyone. You are not trying to choose the correct answer or show up in the right way. Your why is coming from a deep sense of peace from your inner wisdom. The who represents you as you show up from your inner wisdom, not from your ego. It is you as a 100% worthy person believing that you are lovable and deserving. 
The who is you knowing there is nothing wrong with you and you don't have to prove anything. You can notice and acknowledge the what, why, and who, or in other words, what is really happening, why you want what you want, and who you are, a worthy, deserving human on this planet. Okay, so here come the other three W's. Here is what is not your business. How, when, and where. When you think you know how something should happen or how things will play out, you are trying to control something that is outside of your control. You are guessing the future, but your mind doesn't see it as a guess. Your mind sees it kind of as a demand. You cannot control how things will go. We might think we can. We plan for and hope for the how, And it might turn out that way, but it might turn out a completely different way. The same goes for when. We don't know when we will get what we want. We don't know when things will happen. We don't know when a problem will be resolved or how long things will take. If we are thinking things should happen by a certain time, that is us gripping a timeline. The when is not really ours to decide. And we don't know where the solution will come from. Oftentimes, we are surprised by where we get an answer from. So if we can drop the needing to know where a solution will come from and when it will happen and how exactly it will happen, if we can drop all of those and just trust that we are accepting what is reality, why we want what we want, and who we are, which is 100% worthy, we can feel more calm. Here is a verse to practice surrender. Let me remember to be clear and confident. Let me be thoughtful and open. I can express myself. I know others will see me how they see me. Let my voice be authentic to inspire myself and others. Let me be vibrant. Let me surrender. We are continuing to move up Maslow's hierarchy and the chakras. And this week we are in the fourth level, esteem. The needs being met at this level are all about self-worth and self-belief, confidence and respect from others, but from ourselves first. When you tap into your inner wisdom and allow yourself to be 100% authentic, you are more confident. You believe in your own worth. Other people can respect you because you respect yourself. These concepts align perfectly with the throat chakra, which is all about authentically communicating your needs and your truth. This chakra is all about self-expression and purpose, or in other words, the who is able to share the why. Here are this week's journal prompts. How do I show myself I matter? What is the fear blocking me from being 100% authentic? Do I fully forgive myself? As you are taking notes and writing your journal entries this week, remember to continue noticing the new things you have experienced, received, and learned as you are following along in this work. If you keep a list as they show up, you will be amazed at the progress, transformation, and abundance that is being created. Share your list with me in an email at hi at bexby.org or leave a comment at the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash opening. That's B-E-X-B dot O-R-G slash O-P-E-N-I-N-G. And next week is the second to last session of this series, so it's test time. Uh Uh-oh, are you getting flashbacks from being in class and someone saying, will this be on the final? Don't worry, it is not that kind of a test. We will be talking about how tests and experiments play into letting go and surrendering. Make sure you are subscribed to this podcast and my email list so you can get that episode as soon as it is available. 
Something else to make sure of is if you have RSVP'd for the hybrid workshop and discussion happening at the end of this month on Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. We will be learning and talking about abundance and scarcity. You can get all the details and the links to join an RSVP at bexb.org slash let's meet. That is it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk with you next week. You know what I'm really good at? Asking questions, then listening to the answer and redirecting you if you didn't answer, then showing you your thoughts from how you answered. That is part of what coaching with me is like. I don't have an agenda for you. I don't think I know better than you. I do believe in you and your capacity. If you tell me what you want for yourself, I believe it. I can see it for you. I can show you the thoughts that are keeping you from getting what you want. Then you can drop those thoughts and go get what you want. Coaching really works. Come to my site at bexby.org slash coaching and book a session with me. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 